And joining me now, taking uh, time out of her busy schedule as always, is uh, Huntsville Mayor Karen Terziano. Karen, uh, thanks very much for taking the time today. Pleasure, James. Karen, uh, we, we were talking a bit about hoping to address some of the scenarios that Huntsville is facing right now. First of them, obviously, is the COVID-19 situation. We've just recently, a couple of days ago, uh, hit the one-year anniversary of the, um, you know, uh, the rise of COVID, I guess is the way you would put it. Um, and Huntsville has, has, has fared fairly well, I would say, in terms of what's been happening. Maybe you want to address a bit more about what's been happening with the town. Sure. Um, we have hit the one year mark and I don't think anybody thought a year ago we were going to be in it for a year, but uh, we have been. And as a community, I think we've done very well. Um, I know our cases spiked a little last week, but uh, but overall we, we've done very well as a community in, uh, in containing the number of cases. Um, the town was very happy to step up and partner with the doctors and nurses and paramedics to provide a COVID test centre. That's been on the go for six months and uh, we are committed to, to having that COVID test centre go as long as it, is, as it needs to. So, you know, we're certainly planning for the rest of 2021 and we've just uh, partnered with um, the health unit and we have a vaccination centre here in Huntsville. And we partnered with them to provide space so that our community um, can get vaccines in, in, a, in a timely manner and an easy manner. Um, so those, those are both running over at the Active Living Centre and they will continue for as long as our community needs them. I just want to say on that, it's such a great use of property that would go empty, has been empty for a while. Um, you know, the, the Summit Centre and the um, Active Living Centre have just been ghost towns because of COVID. So making use of these facilities that the town has, I mean, for a, a, an appropriate need of testing and vaccinations just makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we, you know, we are hoping that some of this stuff is going to open back up uh, before the end of this year. But we think that for our community, it's more important that, that the ease of testing and the ease of vaccination is the most important thing to our community right now. So, so we're using that part of the building for that. And looking forward, Karen, what do you expect in terms of what is what is happening with the town? I know we're, we've talked before about the Algonquin Theatre, um, you know, again, the Canada Summit Centre. When, when do you suspect that these facilities might start, uh, you know, coming back into use again? Well, of course, we're at the mercy of, of the colour that we're assigned and... Um, you know, once we get back to orange, we're going to, going to be able to open a few more things. I think we'll probably have to be green before the theater reopens. I think that's probably in all likelihood to be fall. But depending on the number of vaccines that we get for our area and, and the you know how quickly we can get the, the majority of the population vaccinated will also help us to, to open up. But we'll do it safely. We'll do it as soon as we can, but uh, we'll make sure that we're following all the rules. Karen, did you want to give any messaging too to the business owners? I know they've really been hit hardest, a lot of them in the community and um, have struggled a bit, but have, have made it through. But I'm just wondering if there's anything you'd like to pass on to them as well. I, I sure do, James, and thanks for that, because um, our business community has been hit hard. It's, they're hit when we, we face red zones, when we face lockdowns. Um, we've had businesses that have been struggling for a year, some that have closed and, uh, you know, it is so sad to think that we have businesses in this town that, that were functioning well and COVID has shut them down. Um, we worry about the ones that still have to get through the balance of this pandemic. And, um, you know, we're trying to be here for them in, in whatever way we, we can. Um, we appreciate the federal and provincial financial supports to them. Um, so, you know, all I can say is that is that we are absolutely sympathetic to you um, and to the lockdowns that you're facing. And uh, we, we just have to follow the rules. I know there's uh, I know there's talk, it has been a lot of talk about separating from Simcoe and we wouldn't have been locked down as much. And, and that's absolutely true. And we've, you know, we've tried to fight that fight um, throughout the pandemic about the separation. And uh, we have not, not gotten anywhere on that, but, so, um, you know, we're going to we're going to get through this pandemic and uh, and hopefully our business community is going to flourish once we do. I, that's a, a, it's a good sentiment, Karen. Um, 
Uh, let's move on to um, what we're looking ahead to in the next couple of weeks. Um, we just saw a bit of it in the last week there with uh, the melt is the possibility of flooding. Now, obviously, um, flooding is a reality for a few residents who are in low lying areas. But um, I think everybody's wondering if we're going to see a repeat of 2019. Yeah, and you know we have we have a lot of snowpack. Um, there's a lot of water content there right now. A um, couple of days of, of uh, melting just the end of last week. Um, hopefully that's helped. Um, I think uh, the low lying areas are always susceptible to flooding. Um, we have been meeting with the MNRF um, regularly for the last little while, trying to get them to draw down the lake levels, which won't prevent flooding, but it will help, um, you know, capacity wise. Um, so we, we continue with talks with them and asking them to do what they can. They continue to tell us that uh, they can't prevent flooding. They can only um, help to mitigate it and uh, help to communicate when it's coming. So um, we, know, we know that it probably is. We don't know to what degree. Um, we also know that warm days and cold nights help to melt the snow. Um, in a more manageable way. And we also know that if we don't get any big thunder storms, that's gonna be good for us too through the rest of March and April. Uh, the one thing I do remember from 2019, aside from all the flooding, is the fact that the town municipalities were very much on top of messaging. And I'm sure that's something that will continue into this year if we do have issues, correct? Yeah, we, we, we are meeting regularly, as I said, with MNRF, and we're going to make sure that that message gets communicated. They have communications going, and uh, as I say, we're consistently asking them that if the water management plan that they function under allows it to draw down those lakes further. So uh, let's move on to the biggest topic, which is impacting uh, Huntsville residents right now, which is the downtown construction, which kicked off last week. It's, the shovels are already in the ground. Um, it's it's a big it's a big impact, but obviously moving to a greater good. It is, and 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 actually, I I, I was very impressed by the way they they put up the fencing and and around the roads, kept the sidewalks open. They're they're nice and wide still. Um, Traffic flow on foot should still be good. I know uh, back on Friday, we faced some some really heavy lineups on Center Street um, coming and going sort of between the eight and nine o'clock hour in the morning. And uh, the district will be working on the, the uh, street lights, the traffic lights to, to try to improve that flow. Um, but it is gonna be slow. We're, we're taking a lot more traffic um, around Center Street, down West Street, uh, while the bridge is closed. The good news is that piece of it is supposed to be done by the end of May. Uh, so hopefully um, that happens and we are back open by the end of May. Once the bridge is open, uh, the detours um, will change and they won't be quite as significant. But people have to realize now that for, for the next two and a half months, um, it's gonna be slow moving to get around town and uh, everybody just needs to have a little more patience than they might normally have. Um, but we will, we will get it done and we will get it done as fast as we can. And one thing I, I would like to highlight is the partnership between yourselves and the BIA um, in, in terms of actually supporting local businesses, highlighting local businesses during this uh, upheaval. Yeah, the, um, the town has been working with the BIA and, and with other bodies as well um, to make sure that keep the downtown as accessible as possible to keep parking um, as close as possible to the downtown. And then the BIA will be um, running incentive programs to get people to come down. Um, we have the Matt Tax Board just approved another program for vouchers for the downtown. Um, so we will continue to work um, to make sure that people have access to our downtown and that our, and that our businesses are open, hopefully fully open. And just again, the messaging seems very consistent. So I think that's appreciated for a lot of people in the area. Um, Karen, is there anything else you'd like to mention while we have you today? Um, just wanted to sort of touch base with the community again. We had three you know, big issues with flooding and, and the streetscape and, and the COVID still. And just wanted to touch base again and uh, hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody continues to practice their their safe social distancing and mask wearing. And, uh, and I think we can see the light at the end of the tunnel on this COVID. 
Well, Mayor Karen Terziano, thank you for taking the time to uh, address some of these issues. I'm sure it's appreciated in the public to, to hear that the mayor is, uh, is uh, concerned and, and working on uh, mitigating these issues as much as possible. Thanks so much, James. 